Hi, welcome back to the speaking booth. Today I'm joined by Miss Naila Abdi. Abdi. I was about to say <laughs> Raza again, but uh, yeah. And as far as I know, you have been in the education system or industry for the past 32 years, right? Yes, that's correct. And if I'm correct, you are the boss of my. You were the first boss of my current bosses. One of your bosses, yes. The other one, not the first one, but definitely I was the boss. Is that the one we're thinking about? Is that Mustafa? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I'm glad to have you here. There is no I'm... particular agenda for you know this podcast, which I'm trying to turn into a chat, as it should be, because most of the podcasts were like more or less interviews. But whatever comes to mind. You can say, please don't hold back. There's no limit to where the conversation can go. And uh, what I'll start with is, you have been, as as I know, generally is that there is like three places that like pulke is tarap or pulke is tarap. And by by right side, I mean like Clifton Valley Education Institutions, and then there's Gulshan and Johor and all these places. Hmm. So like, let's say for Gulshan and Johor, we have Credo or Beacon, and we have Reeds here as well. Uh, and for the other side, we have Nixer and Cedar and Scepter and Lyceum and Roots and Roots, uh, of which you are the principal. Yes, oh, not to mention that. I'm very proud of the fact <laughs> that I currently am the principal of the third largest system. So yes, yeah. Roots is uh, a name to reckon with. Absolutely. So what's what's the difference in your opinion? Hassan, I started basically from what I would call pulke. Darmian me because yeah. uh, I started teaching before I got married. That was somewhere in 1980s, and that was in Nasra School, and that is right in the middle of the city. Yeah. So for me, the difference would be not among uh, the students or the areas. I would say that the difference is basically uh, the way a child is brought up, yeah. or the family background, or uh, the. the Philosophies and the nurturing that has been given mm-hmm, to them. Mm-hmm. So no, for me, pulke is taraf or pulke is taraf doesn't really make any difference. I mean, to to a certain degree, I feel like there there is like that sort of difference in in bringing up, which kind of peers over into your social life. Yes. And the way you interact with people. Definitely. And that's that's very evident with the way most students in Johor would react to their teachers. Uh, teaching in a classroom because there, there's definitely an atmosphere, mm-hmm. and as I've seen, co-institutions, um, people who are from like let's say KGS or or Cedar, they they have a very different approach towards classrooms. They they act more themselves. I'd say I mean they they are themselves, but they're not as recluse as people in Johor or Gulshan would be, as I've seen. Hasan, I don't agree with you. You are looking at these things from a student's perspective. Yeah, yeah. What I am looking at as uh, a teacher yeah. and a and an educationist. I remember uh, a student I had in Beacon House who was very much himself. He actually was pretty funny because he once threw a book at his table while he was in a chemistry lesson because he didn't agree with what the teacher was saying to him, and he just walked out and walked into my office. As he walked out, he had no problem talk, walking into my office saying that I am not going to sit in this X Y Z teacher's class because what he's teaching is um, that's a pretty bold move. Not acceptable. He had another word for that, which I do not want to <laughs> say in front of the camera. We might get demonetized. But that was I. I definitely would say that uh, it again depends on how a child uh, is, is brought, brought up, up, what his uh, earlier education is all about, yeah. how much confidence we have given that child. Because you see, but the mizi is one thing that is not tolerable or acceptable, yeah. but. Confidence is. Yeah. yeah. Why that's should right. a child not be allowed to say that? Why? You are just studying. That's not how I want to be taught chemistry, physics, biology, literature, whatever. Yeah. So um, you are right when you say that certain schools, without naming them, uh, all these established big names, do give that sort of a um, finesse or level of confidence to their yeah. students, where the child is. More confident in voicing out his feelings. However, it again I would reiterate that it doesn't really uh, matter where the school is. It again depends on the from. home, like, yeah. the type of um, confidence level that you have given to your child, and then in your early years, you see we 
at this point in time have started looking at a child only from the college point of view. Yeah. That's not how it is. Yeah. It just starts from his early years and mm -hmm. then that's how it penetrates all the way up. There might be circumstances in between. So I have seen students from Beacon House being extremely, extremely polite yet confident. I have seen aesthetic students who are not at all confident because again it is how they have been seen. Yeah, definitely. I feel like in a, in a lot of situations most institutions really penalize this type of behavior because they confuse it for Bhattamizi, hala ki confidence hoti hai. I agree with you. I 110% agree with you. Again, I would not say institution, then I would say individuals. Yeah. See, it depends on uh, the type of individual who is uh, basically in place of authority. Mm -hmm. The person in authority has the most honest on how you are going to take that child up and see what he's doing. Children do have issues, Children, yeah. and especially at uh, this age, which I would say from 16 to 18, 18. to 20, that's a very precarious age. Mm -hmm. A child might not feel very comfortable in a lot of situations. Yeah. Then I would say that the reaction hota hai, wo sometimes ek baat par nahi dependent on mm. It is dependent on a number of, factors. number of factors. And when that dependency is not checked out by that particular adult, Things uh, become bad. Um, it's, misconstru it's misconstrued for something else. It's misconstrued. Sometimes I have had that issue. My bosses have one of my beloved boss uh, who has also been the boss of one of my colleagues yeah. used to call me uh, somebody who would actually uh, allow students to be uh, naughty or too rude. I used to get scolded by my boss for doing yeah. that. Uh, she used to call me the corrupter. <laughs> and uh, the reason, the only reason was that when I was uh, listening to the, a child, a child being abusive, a child being uh, uh, in some sort of a relationship and coming in and telling me that they have had a fight with, you know, over one uh, uh, female, two boys fight. And that's very normal. That's <laughs> very, very normal. So you can't kill that bacha. Yeah. You need to talk to them. So no, it's not about institutions. It's about individuals. It's about individuals. Yeah, I, I stand corrected. I'm because, so sorry for correcting you. I, no, 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 <laughs> it's, it's fine. It's fine. I prefer that. Okay, I prefer that. Right. It's because like throughout life, I've experienced people who have, I've, I've been through a number of institutions. I won't name them, obviously. There were different hmm. institu institutions with different systems, different ways of handling yes. students. And never did I ever come across someone who took the time out to actually wonder why, why are you so angry hmm. or why are you so frustrated and it can't just be the amount of homework we give you it's got to be something else nobody exploits that nobody thinks yeah there's a point to which someone can take this much crap from someone so obviously you need to check out a student's life their personal life because obviously that will like come over into his school life the same way work life comes over into your, your like personal life. Like yes. It's not supposed to happen. And I think that's the amount of pressure that's put on someone who's in the bracket of like 14 to 18. Yes. How, how can you expect someone to be normal during that? You, you can't. So you need to just, as institutions go, there should be policies that namely should look after students' well-beings. Because obviously they're paying you for an education but you can't just hammer in ideas and just leave them as, a, as they are. If they're having a fit, you need to understand why it's happening. Hassan, uh, when we decided that we wanted to follow the Western style of uh, education, yeah. what we forgot was that the type of education that we had in our own uh, side of the world was actually the best uh, type of education. By that, I do not mean using uh, corporal punishment, yeah. but uh, a teacher when, let's say, when I was a student, the teacher was not just my teacher. The teacher was my mentor as well. The teacher was somebody I could go, but it would not be all teachers, but at mm -hmm. least you could always identify one teacher and you could go. But now it has all become uh, uh, money. You are paying me for this much, so this is all I'm going to uh, deliver. Yeah. So that's not what education is all about. Remember earlier when you, you and I were chatting and I said it's not business, it's an industry. It's an industry. 
an industry provides you services services yeah. can't remain in the four uh, walls of a classroom yeah. it has to come out um, earlier when people used to ask me how long do you work you only work for seven hours or six hours and yeah. i tell them it's a 24 7 hour of job where i take my work home and i take it with pleasure yeah. The reason I take it with pleasure is that when a child calls me after work hours, mm -hmm. for any reason, for me that is no longer work, that yeah. is a personal, a personal connection. Yeah. You see, I am connected, I am sitting with you at this point in time because my connection with the, the people I am uh, uh, doing this uh, whole uh, chat for are yeah. people I am connected with uh, mentally, people yeah. I respect, people yeah. I love. So if as a teacher I can't do that, mm -hmm. I need to actually step out and say, okay, teaching is not for me. Let me yeah. go into another business. Mm -hmm. And there are so many businesses each one of us can do. Yeah. Teaching, people say that you use words like passion and love and all those and yeah. these are just jargons. They're not actually. Mm -hmm. Teaching is, uh, is uh, a profession of yeah. love. Either you love it because believe me, well, uh, A-level teachers are paid a lot of money. It can be edited later if you wish it. to, but they are really rich people. But people like me who are in administration, we are paid an okay amount and we are yeah. happy with it. The reason why I keep doing it, I it's would because always... Because you, you, you like your job. I love my job. That's the point. It's not about likeness, it's about yeah. lo uh, loving it. I Isn't love it. Isn't that what a teacher is supposed to do? Cultivate a student mind? Yes. That's the, that's the only thing a teacher is supposed to do. Yeah. You see, if I wanted to, let's say, teach any XYZ subject, uh -huh. Google and uh, Khan's Academy and uh, YouTube does exactly the same job. Yeah. When I am there in that classroom, I am doing a lot more than just lot talking. A lot more than that, yeah. I think the most thing is Students are just disconnected from being in a classroom. Yes. They consider it to be the most mundane stuff. I, I used to consider it to be punishment to sit in a classroom where I didn't enjoy being taught. And it would be painful to sit through the entire classroom. Like, class me bad now, other ghanta, a ghanta used to be torture. And when I went home, because I wasn't paying attention at all, I couldn't understand anything, Khan Academy. I just use this laptop for Khan Academy or Google or anyone who had like a five minute animated video just to explain benzene ring kya hoti hai. Like in this complexity is just this, that or the other. People need to understand that we, we're social animals, we need to interact. And if we don't interact, what's the point? See, the whole concept of formal teaching was interaction. Yeah. When you started deciding that, all right, I need to send my two and a half year old child to a school. It's because I want him to interact more than uh, he does at home. Yeah. So when he goes there and he feels that, OK, this is not what I'm enjoying. Yeah. So why would he want to interact with people? Mm -hmm. Now, I, I have a son who goes to school and the complaint I get about him and from his uh, teachers, who are all my colleagues as well. Uh, they keep telling me he's a leader. So what's wrong in it? I mean, I ask them, I like my son being a leader, so that's okay. They mm -hmm. tell me that he helps everyone, but he does not like writing. That's okay as well. What is he, What is going to be the worst thing that's going to happen? I hope he doesn't hear this yeah. because I wouldn't <laughs> want him to. But the worst thing that is going to happen is that he's going to get uh, C's in his uh, subjects. That's yeah. fine. But if he comes out of this uh, whole... Uh, rigor of this whole regimental approach yeah. as a very confident human being as a leader i would say that the teacher has done his job yeah so that's what i see a teacher as it should not be where you should be bored you go sit in a classroom and be bored that's not fair yeah my teaching subject has always been something that most of the humans in this uh, generation consider to be a boring subject Which is? literature find it to be one of the most interesting subjects. It's one of the best subjects. It uh, it's not just uh, lovely to study it, it's beautiful to teach as well. Yeah. Because every year the same novel has so many different perspectives. Yeah. Now, I have two choices. I can tell my student, no, bache, Shakespeare is not talking about all this. And, uh, He's talking and about this. this. He's only talking about this. Yeah. Now, that is going to make uh, literature very boring and Shakespeare tough. Yeah. But if a child says, but I see it like this, as long as you can prove it, good. And the proof point comes from the interaction. Yeah. Let the students speak. speak. Why are we scared of students uh, 
speaking out. I think it's more of an ego. It's more of an ego thing. Okay. For most teachers. All right. Because if you have a student, consider yourself to be a thirty-year-old teacher in a classroom. I'm not saying you've you've ended up dead in a ditch. Teaching is a great profession, and for most people who are passionate about teaching, they they'll do it no matter what, and mm. that's that's very admirable. But take it to account that there's probably an 18-year-old or a 16-year-old in your classroom who probably has a better idea about something than you do, because it's yes. more than probable. Yes. It is. It's and and people assume, like older people assume, that it's it's impossible. and that it's imperative that the older person has a better idea because i'm older i have more wisdom that's that's not true biological age has nothing to do with wisdom exactly. i wish it did but it doesn't yeah. uh wisdom comes from so many different things and yeah. as you just said that a younger person would have a fresher point of view exactly. you being uh, younger than me have the light uh, giving you that constant irritation for me yeah. it's uh, all in the same uh, ball game so yes we are keeping this and we are not cutting this out this is showing how wise i am on cut after dark <laughs> yes so hasan as i was saying that you see it's about ego i agree with you but it's not about age ego can be in a 20 year old teacher ego can be there in a 200 year old teacher ego is again about the nurturing yeah when you have decided yeah It's all about learning, teaching and learning, learning and teaching. It's never one thing. Yeah. You can't have a teacher without a learner. Yeah. All these uh, well-known, famous uh, friends of mine all around the world are uh, famous because of their learners. Yeah. And the learners become uh, those high achievers because of the teachers. Exactly. So let's do it as a partnership. I'm ready to listen to just about anyone. Uh, yeah. I have been taught a number of uh, this uh, beautiful machine that you have in front of you. Is to operate karna, is me Excel pe kam karna, Word pe kam karna has been taught to me by my students. Yeah. They would sit on my seat, and I was told by somebody, uh, "Ma'am, aapki seat pe students baithte hain." Oh, really? <laughs> of course, I know. They sit there because I tell them to sit there. It's just a plastic and rubber seat. Yeah. And it doesn't make them anything but the my teachers. Thing is, teachers. they assume it signifies a form of superiority. Quite complex, eh? What is superiority? It's a complex, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's a complex. I feel like okay, if you've given that chair that creed and title, that okay, mm -hmm. only a person who's capable of teaching something can sit there. Fine. That student was teaching you how to use Excel. So he deserves the merit for that seat. He sits there. If if you can teach something, fine. But I don't see the point in giving a piece of plastic or leather uh, some form of credence. Okay, like this is where you sit when you can teach something. When this uh, these children used to sit on my seat and teach me how to do Excel, yeah. and I would uh, say thank you to them, yeah. they had a sense of achievement. Yeah. It's always a, a very special sense of achievement when you have taught something mm -hmm. to somebody you respect. Yeah. It's not always. It's not a sense of achievement for me when I would teach, uh, let's say, letters to a small baby. Yeah. It's in him to learn. But teaching me how to use Excel mm -hmm. is more of a sense of achievement because you are doing it for somebody who may not be at that learning uh, uh, paradigm. Yeah. So, and every uh, Teachers' Day, I make it a point to say thank you to all my teachers, including these ones, and I always get responses. So I feel extremely happy because yeah. I feel that that's what I have achieved. Yeah. That sense of pride that they have is still in them. Hmm. मुझे सबसे अजीब बात ये लगती है कि when when people reach a certain age mm -hmm. they find themselves incapable of learning more or taking in more or retaining more any information that could have anything to do with probably the liberal world or new technology i mean there are older people who would refuse to get a mac or or refuse to get a touch screen phone because they they refuse to learn how it works like um I wouldn't say my grandparents like my my grandparents they they do use like these phones my grandmother on the other hand like my dadi she doesn't really she's not on that hype so she she's she refuses to get a new phone and she has one of those like Nokia really old phones button uh, yeah, like the indestructible mm -hmm. ones the ones with all the memes yes so i mean my my question always is why Why? Why you? Why do you want to limit yourself to something? Um, 
if you were to take the example of your dadi yeah. uh, have we created that sort of a hype why should she there has to be a reason for her to change yeah so um i remember uh, because uh, as i have inherited these sweaty palms from my father yeah. a little heat and my palms sweat just like my dad yeah. and he find touch screens difficult to use mm. so what we did because we wanted him to be on whatsapp yeah. so what we did was that we uh, gave him certain uh, uh, apps and things where he could actually see all the plants and all the birds that he loves yeah. and now he would use a tissue paper and keep using it and then well uh, we bought him another um, uh, that uh, i don't know what that thing is called but you can put it on your uh, finger and you don't need to uh, yeah i think have I've heard a, of it it's um, like a lint cover uh, it, it's a lint cover um, uh, so my sister got that for him now touch screens are have become easy for him yeah. the reason why he's all right for uh, making that particular change mm -hmm. was because the interest the level of interest that he had in a certain yeah. area was there right in front of him and he knew that the buttons will not uh, do that for him so he wanted yeah. uh, a touch screen yeah. now the same is the case with my mom um we told my mom that if you want to speak to your uh, daughter who lives across the world yeah. on daily basis that's the only option and yesterday i got a call from her can you just buy my uh, phone uh, for me so i have uh, we created that for them yeah. so it's the same thing just like you need to create an interest in a younger child yeah. or in an a level student or in an uh, o level or metric or into whatever you have yeah. to do the same for the older people mm -hmm. if i have certain interest mm -hmm. uh, only then uh, would i do it yeah. i got got up early on a sunday morning mm -hmm. uh, because this is something i enjoy I enjoy talking to younger people I enjoy talking about things that I feel really uh, passionate about so I would uh, give up a holiday yeah. for By that By the way we are shooting on a Sunday That's that's We are very good we yeah. uh, work on every single day Yeah Yes continue Hasan so why not create some sort of an interest Well I mean there the, there is an in, inclination towards why she should because um, It's not about should Life is not about should She kind of wants to talk to my brother mm -hmm. who lives in Australia Yeah and she can't really do that with the Nokia phone you obviously yes, you need to use whatsapp or mm -hmm. or some other app. otherwise it becomes very expensive yeah so like long distance rates are like insane yes. and you wouldn't want to blow all your money on that you can obviously use whatsapp so i've been trying to uh, convince my dad to buy her a touch phone so that we can teach her how to use whatsapp and all and every time we go to buy one she has like the intuition she like calls us before we're about to buy something and she just goes don't buy so have you tried letting her use your phone to call I your have. brother and then you know first uh, keep it very frequent and then uh, limit the frequency and then she'll <laughs> want her own okay i have to be people don't like being dependent yep yeah and that's what we did with my mom i used to tell her acha main next time aungi i'll call uh, her and you can talk to her yeah. and then now she tells me i need my own phone because yeah. uh, you hardly come you and hardly her, come. you hardly come so uh, today uh, somewhere around 4:00 uh, i'll go and get her a phone give it to her a very simple one which doesn't require a lot of things put it's her on it's not that intricate ha it's not that in intricate let her have the feel yeah so hasan it it's not about age where we are creating this hype for learning uh, different mm. technologies learning different things yeah. i did my masters in education uh, while i was working mm -hmm. this was the reason i did it was because it was a professional demand yeah. and then i started enjoying it i went in because i was pushed into it yeah. but then i enjoyed it before that i said why should i i already have a masters i why should i go in for a second mm -hmm. one but because i was pushed into something and then it became uh, enjoyable yeah now yeah. i actually uh, can easily uh, coach people on that mm. all right so hype bagair hype ke aap na bachche ko padha sakte ho na bade ko padha sakte ho true true to i think to a certain degree It's like you always need room for. You always need some sort of an inspiration. Yeah. For everything, hmm. a young child um, needs to, if he has or she has started uh, the interest in reading or storytelling, yeah. he would want to read because uh, he wants to explore the books himself. Books himself. If uh, just like a two-year-old bacha uses the technology so well because he yeah. enjoys the cartoons on it, mm -hmm. so take the device away from him. Give him a book in his hand, 
and let him explore the world. But by doing that, else. you have to do exactly the same thing. Yeah. The, 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 like... the whole problem today is that I expect my student to do certain things, which I don't do myself. Yeah. <laughs> if they don't see me reading, why would they? Yeah. If they don't see me uh, adapting to change, yeah. why should they? Yeah. If they don't see me talking in low voice, why should they? Yeah. It's as simple as that. So, modeling is important. Mm. Well, I guess that's the difference between your side and my side, or any side for that matter. I mean, we're all on the same bridge. Um, thank you, Miss Nyla, for this entirely lovely conversation. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Thank you, Asa.